here, now. These guys are bigger than life. Cool, chain, giant fangs! And that's why I love Spawn. Spawn sits at the center of the Venn diagram of all the things that I like. I like the spikes, I like the cool chains, <laughs> I like the skulls, and I really like the merchandise. And when Lottie saw this Japanese exclusive Spawn toy that comes with an exclusive Windows 95 CD-ROM, she knew that I was going to be so into it. And there was no way that I wasn't going to show you. We first saw this in a vintage toy store called Nerd Base. In the store they had this whole wall of Spawn toys. We spent so long just looking at them and as soon as we saw this red recolor of Violator we all knew this was coming home. I mean look at it, it's so cool. It's an interactive CD-ROM! Just to forewarn you, this was staple shut at the point of manufacture, so in order to take this out I'm going to need to be unboxing this for the first ever time. So if you don't like seeing vintage toys being taken off the card and opened up then this is not going to be the video for you. Look away now. Violator was part of the first ever wave of action figures released for Spawn back in 1994. The red recolor that you see here was a mail order rebate exclusive which came out in 1995. The outer packaging says copyright 1997 and the copyright on the CD-ROM says 1998. So that gives us a rough idea of when this product came out. The Spawn comic had made a bit of a name for itself by using a lot of the flashy gimmickry that was around in 90s comics at the time. Things like variant covers, hollow foiling, gold leaf, debossing, and arguably very little in the way of substance. You could argue that these qualities don't make for particularly good comic books, but they do make for excellent toys. In fact, you could argue that Spawn is a better toy than it ever was a comic book. The Spawn toys in particular absolutely changed the game. More detail, more articulation, more and better paint applications. Compared to some of the other toys which were in retail at the time, the fact that these toys were so overloaded with all this flash and gimmickry is exactly what sold them. You might be thinking, oh, what about NECA? What about Sideshow? What about Mezco? Well, they all came after. McFarlane did this first and it did it best. And Violator is now out. <sighs> we can let him breathe. Hashtag let them breathe. It has to be said straight away, this is such a good toy. It's so well done. The sculpting is incredible. There's so much gross, bumpy skin detail. The paint applications are absolutely amazing. The bendy limbs are a really great idea to give you this range of posability. And he's got this kind of funny chomping action, which is, <laughs> I mean, it's, it's good fun. Very briefly, the comic book that comes included isn't really a proper comic book. This is a promotional comic book designed to be packed in to encourage you to buy more toys. It's printed on some pretty low quality 70s era newsprint, not the glossy comic book pages that we would naturally associate with Spawn, but my assumption is you're not here for that comic book, you're here for this. The CD-ROM. This is a special moment for me. There's always something nice about opening something new, but when something is sat around for over 20 years, just waiting to be opened and waiting to be held, that, I don't know. Am I, am I weird for thinking that? It's been waiting this entire time to be put into a CD drive, so let's fulfill its destiny. In it goes. I, I'm a little worried, actually, that Jar Jar may be tainted by the evil in this CD. <laughs> Because this is a Japanese exclusive CD-ROM, I did actually have some trouble installing it. Not a lot of trouble, it was just trying to install to a directory with Japanese characters in it. I, I just deleted the problematic characters and it installed fine. Well, we're in and immediately my first thought is that music is a jam. <laughs> We have three options here. We can either go to the collection room, we can find out about Spawn, or we can find out more about McFarlane toys. The first thing I clicked on is, of course, the collection room. Straight away, this is amazing. I mean, legitimately, I think this is so cool. There's up to eight series of McFarlane toys stored on here. Every single toy has been photographed. Presumably, there's some flavor text over there on the right, but because I don't have a Japanese copy of Windows, it's just 
garbled ASCII text, but the fact that there's a document of all of these McFarlane toys, including all repaints, variations, and limited edition toys. You've also got the ability at the bottom right, you can click on any of these toys to mark it as owned, and then you can come back in and use this to actually track your collection. To me, I just think that's amazing. Gold variants? Oh my god, they're so cool. I, I need to get some of these. Back at the main menu, I then went into the McFarlane Toys section, and this then gives you three more decisions. You can watch a bunch of trailers, you can view McFarlane's other action figures, or you can click Ready for Action, which is actually an incredibly cool thing. This details the toy design process at McFarlane, going through sketches, initial sculpts, the injection molding process, paint apps, packaging, merchandising. I'm not really aware of something else which gives this much transparency about the toy process. In 1998, this would have been mind blowing, I think. McFarlane's other action figures is really similar to the action figure collecting bit previously but it's just for non-spawn toys so this is where you'll find other McFarlane toys of the time like Young Blood and Wetworks and Kiss. Going into the About Spawn section again gives you even more decisions and straight away my eyes just went amazing Todd <laughs> that's got to be good. And it is, it's really good. It's a Q&A session with Todd McFarlane. I don't know anyone who speaks Japanese, unfortunately, so I've got no idea what these questions are and what these answers are, but my assumption is the questions are something like, hey, Todd McFarlane, you're so cool. Thanks for inventing Spawn. And all he says in response is, you're welcome. There's another section here giving you a brief overview of the Spawn comics. I guess if you didn't know who Spawn was at this point, there's a section promoting the Spawn film on here too, which if you haven't seen it, quality film. And then probably the most exciting thing on this whole CD-ROM was the bit that shows you all of the other Spawn merch. So not toys, but sweaters and Hot Wheels and lighters and trading cards and oh my god, silver rings. I I need these. I mean, I legitimately need these rings. If, if, if anybody has them, I will buy them. Back to that previous menu, you can then click through and watch a bunch of toy commercials, which is super fun. I clicked on a couple uh, and I'll, I'll load them in here so you can enjoy them because they're only short, but they're super low resolution. So please be aware of the time and allow the pixely charm to wash over you. Exploding from the pages of Spawn, America's number one comic book. Spawn Ultra Action Figures, blasting into combat with their mortal enemies. Spawnmobile versus Violator Monster Rig, Menacing Clown, Chapel, Bad Rock Fights Back. You can control the action in Spawn Alley with all of the Spawn Ultra Action Figures. Figures, playsets, and vehicles, each sold separately. Spawn from Irwin. As a purely promotional tool, I couldn't figure out why this is Japanese only. None of the products here seem to be exclusive to Japan, and from what I could see, nearly everything in here, including all the packaging, was all English language. Most of the menus were written in English as well, so it feels like with only a little bit of effort, this would easily have worked as an international product. I tried doing my due diligence on this, but I, I couldn't find anything. It puts me in a bit of a tricky situation, if I'm honest, because this will probably make this video the most comprehensive record of this weird little promotional CD-ROM. What we do know is that the 1990s was the era of the interactive CD-ROM. I am fascinated by this stuff. At a time before the internet was particularly well established, and certainly before we had things like Wikipedia or even Google, bringing together a product that has photographs, video, music, and information all together in a neat, well-presented interactive package is a really cool way to bridge the gap between people who wanted to know more about Spawn toys before they were able to find out on the internet. Because the Spawn comic launched much later in Japan, launched in January 1996, it launched alongside at least two series of the Spawn action figures. It must have done fairly well because the next year, a really big prestige format art book called Spawn Action Figure Collection launched exclusively in Japan, and then a new volume released every year thereafter. And so evidently, toy collectors were the angle. That was the keystone to Spawn's success in Japan. And so the CD-ROM is a natural extension of that. 
right? Other promotional packs did exist in Japan around the same time, like this Blue Spawn with episodes of the HBO animated series on a VHS, but there's nothing quite as exclusive as this CD-ROM. For those of you who are curious enough to experience this for yourselves, this disc has been ripped and it has been uploaded to archive.org. You can go and download it and play it yourself now if you really want to. I hope you enjoyed this dive into this bizarre little Japanese marketing CD-ROM. If you like this kind of stuff, then subscribe to the channel. I've, I've got plenty of other stuff like this on the channel. And if you like Spawn, then check out some of these other links to other creators who are creating Spawn content during the month of September in an event known as hashtag Spawn Timber. This was created by my good friend Diego Rivera. So make sure you go subscribe to his channel and check out his content too. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. I'll see you all later. Ta-da.